Most of us don't think much about airplane engines. When you're in the air, you might look down and see the engines hanging under the wing. You might think it's amazing that the laws of physics still work at an altitude of 37,000 feet. After that, you relax with a glass of wine in your iPad, knowing that everything will be fine. We don't think much about airplane engines because we expect them to work perfectly all the time. We have faith in the maker because of his or her track record and reputation. Still, a lot of work has gone into making us feel so comfortable and putting our minds at ease. There are a lot of places around the world that make engines. Most of them are well-known brands like Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce, and General Electric. At this point, they have been giving engines to airplane makers for a number of years. Even though there have been bumps in the road and some types of planes have had engine problems, these problems are usually not that big of a deal. Even though there are many different companies that make modern jet engines, one thing they all have in common is that they are all reliable. A lot of accuracy is needed when designing and making airplane engines. Still, after the engines are built, they are put through a very long testing process. In this section, we'll look at the steps that are taken to test aircraft engines before they are made. Both water and ice are shot into test engines. Because engines can take in a lot of water, tests are usually done to see how much water they have taken in. At Boeing, the aircraft taxi through water troughs that have been specially designed for them. The engines are also given water while they are running by the people who make them. When General Electric tests its Gen X engines, the company puts 800 gallons of water into the engine every minute. The water is expected to move through the engine and come out the back without affecting the thrust. It means that the plane's engines can work in the worst rainstorms and while flying through pools of water. Boeing told Katya Moscovich of the BBC, these tests check that the engines, thrust reversers, and brake systems work correctly even when exposed to water kicked up by the wheels when there is standing water on the runway. In order to take things to the next level, testers will also fire ice pellets into the engines while they are operating. By any stretch of the imagination, these are not tiny little icicles. Instead, they resemble large balls made of densely packed hard ice. It is intended to simulate the sensation of soaring through a hailstorm. How hens help to lessen the damage caused by bird strikes. A lot of bird strikes are reported here at Simple Flying. When a bird flies into the cockpit window or another part of the airplane, this is called a bird strike. Also, engines have the chance of eating birds. Bird strikes rarely kill people in modern planes because the engines are so well built and designed. Well, except for the bird. At the moment, one person dies because of a bird strike for every 1 billion hours of flight time. Bird strikes, on the other hand, do damage planes, and it costs an average of $1.2 billion a year to fix them. And as U.S. Airlines' emergency landing in the Hudson River in 2009 showed, birds can still cause an airplane to have to make an emergency landing. The makers of engines use a simple but reliable method to figure out how well an engine can handle being hit by a bird. In the 1950s, de Havilland was the first to make the chicken gun. The cannon had a wide barrel and was powered by compressed air. It was used to fire dead chickens at the plane and even into its engines. What we want to happen is for the blades to keep their shape even after they hit each other. Since the 1950s, frozen chicken carcasses have been used in the food industry instead of fresh chicken carcasses. Adam Tischler, who works in Boeing's Flight Test Communications Division, told the BBC, We have used birds to test airplane structures. This is not at all a typical test. On the other hand, it can be a good way to find out what happens when a bird hits an airplane. Blades that are breaking apart and holding the pieces. One of the hardest ways to test how reliable an engine is, is to try to simulate what happens when a fan blade breaks free. Even though that shouldn't happen, there have been times when it did. If dirt or other things get into the engine, this could be a problem. The shaft of a jet engine can turn at up to 3,000 RPMs. If a blade breaks off for any reason, it could do a lot of damage to the rest of the engine. And any debris it leaves behind could hurt the fuselage. The goal of engine builders is to keep the blade inside the engine while letting the casing spread the blade's energy. At some point during the testing process, a small explosive will be attached to the base of the blade. They are in charge of running the engine. 
setting off the explosive, and keeping the blade inside the engine chamber while the engine is spinning. Floating in the air are test environments and testing tools. For their own safety, these checks are done while the plane is firmly anchored to the ground. But a jet engine's dependability is really put to the test when it is put through its paces in the air. First, engines must be checked and certified to make sure that they are safe and fit for use. Before the certification process can be finished, the engines must be tested in flight. For this, engine makers use planes that have been changed in special ways. These planes are sometimes called test beds. There's a market for test bed planes, and some retired 747s are used for this purpose. Two Boeing 747s that belong to the company General Electric have been turned into warehouses where computers, electronics, and other equipment are stored. Rolls-Royce also uses two older Boeing 747s as testbed aircraft. In 2019, Rolls-Royce got their most recent testbed plane from Qantas. Rolls-Royce said at the time, as a flying testbed, it will be equipped with the most up-to-date testing tools, and for the first time, it will test engines that power both commercial and business aircraft. In the future, new systems will be able to collect better data faster than ever before and technologies will be tested at higher altitudes and faster speeds. Testbed aircraft might look weird because the engine is in an awkward place, but they are necessary for testing engines and are a big investment on the part of the engine manufacturer. Rolls-Royce spent $70 million on buying and customizing that Qantas 747 the year before. Soon, Rolls-Royce will buy another 747 plane that Qantas no longer needs. This will free Qantas of having to take care of it. There have been rumors that General Electric is also thinking about buying one or more. Why does Qantas want to get rid of so many 747s? Even though the older planes are getting up there in age, they are always well taken care of and their engines are always in good shape. Going beyond and above When companies like Airbus and Boeing are getting ready to release a new model of plane, they do their own tests on both the plane and its engines. Airbus tested the A350XWB for hundreds of hours and tens of thousands of miles before giving it its final certification. On these test flights, the whole plane, not just the engines, is tested to see how well it works. Still, you should be aware that the engines are a pretty big part of the car. Reliability is important to the people who make engines, the people who make airplanes, the airlines, and the passengers. They try to get as close to perfect as they can, even though nothing is perfect. Airbus says that the answer is to go above and beyond what is asked of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.